Yellowstone supervolcano is hit by a record-breaking mega swarm of 1,200 earthquakes in just one month. Since the swarm began June 12, there have been a total of 1,284 earthquakes. They've continued to monitor its activity. The largest so far was magnitude 4.4. Still, the experts say the risk of an eruption remains low, with alert level at normal. Yellowstone Park, hit by 1,200 quakes in the span of only a month, seismologists say. In the most recent update on these earthquake storms, scientists have been monitoring since June 12. The researchers say there have been 1,284 events so far the largest with magnitude 4.4. As the activity spurred fears that the supervolcano could be gathering up, gearing up for an eruption, the experts say the risk of such an event is low and the alert level remains at normal. As the swarm continues, they will continue to monitor its activity and provide updates as seen fit. For now, though, experts have left an alert level in the green zone, meaning activity is still considered normal. If it were to erupt, the Yellowstone volcano, supervolcano, would be one of a thousand times as powerful as the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption, although experts say the risk is low of that happening. Yellowstone hasn't erupted for 70,000 years, so it's going to take some impressive earthquake and ground uplifting to get these things started. This is what the U.S. Geological Survey explains. Well, ground uplifting has been taking place. My last video on Yellowstone did specify that. Besides intense earthquake swarms, with many earthquakes above 4 or 5 magnitude, we expect rapid and notable uplift around the caldera, possibly tens of inches per year. Finally, the rising magma will cause explosions from the boiling temperature geothermal reservoirs. Even with explosions, earthquakes, notable up ground uplift, the most likely volcanic eruptions would be the type that would have minimal effect outside the park itself. However, if it were to blow, that would be a terrible situation. The swarm has steadily persisted over the last few weeks. In an update last month, experts revealed the swarm had reached nearly 900 quakes by June 28th, and when the earthquake started on uh, June 12th, G USGS said it was the highest number of earthquakes at the park within a single week in the past five years. I leave links below for you for this. You can read more on the USGS Volcano Hazards Program for Yellowstone. This is on Daily Mail UK. Are you serious? Are you serious? Is Yellowstone super volcano ready to blow? Well, that's that's exactly what we're hearing. Uh, reports now amid the growing swarm of earthquakes. Now over 1,000 earthquakes in the last month at Yellowstone National Park. Now we know there was a 4.6 earthquake that hit right there at the... Uh, uh, right there in the center of it, right there where the super volcano is, uh, about a month ago. And then we just had 5.8 earthquake hit Lincoln, Montana, so which is all part of the danger zone. Okay, we just had that this week. So Montana's largest earthquake ever. Scientists are now growing increasingly concerned that the so-called Super volcano at the heart of Yellowstone National Park could be building toward a Category 7 eruption. So what is a super volcano, you may ask? What does this explosion mean for life on planet Earth? Well, I can tell you it would be catastrophic. It'd be cataclysmic, apocalyptic of a biblical proportion. There's no question about it. It would pretty well put an end to life for the most part, in North 
um, and Central and South America, our side of the hemisphere. Is this thing going to blow before Jesus returns? I don't know. Could it be a part of uh, the effects of the gravitational pull that we may be going to experience on this planet from planet X or Nibiru when it comes closer, this binary system that's pulling up, seemingly something's shaking the heavens and could be trying to pull the earth apart. We're breaking records in volcanoes, breaking records in earthquakes, breaking records in sinkholes. We're having all kinds of extreme weather conditions, global changes that are taking place that are affecting uh, mudslides, landslides, flash flooding, all kinds of thunderbolts of lightning. And, and we're, we're just witnessing one event after another. The sun is hotter than it's ever been before. The radiation levels in California in the last two years have went up 13%. In the Northeast, 19%. And the earth seems to be shaking and quaking. It's almost like the, it's, it, the wobbling on the, uh, uh, on the poles. And so we're watching all of these apocalyptic signs, realizing that every bit of it is leading us ever so closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we're in a heat wave. It's almost like a heat dome that has brought uh, unbelievable suffering in Iran. It hit 129.2 degrees Fahrenheit with a heat index of a record 162 degrees. You could fry an egg. Oh, no, no. You could fry an omelet and the bacon and maybe even, I don't know what all. I mean, are you serious? This is unbelievably hot. And it's happening in Southern California. 10,000 cattle have died from the excessive heat. Oh, and then what about Nevada? And, and 119 degrees in Las Vegas. And 120 degrees in Tucson, Arizona. And, and Mexico, it's cooking down there. Are you serious? So we're, we're, we're looking and we're witnessing and we're understanding that the UV rays, the, the, uh, uh, the cosmic Ray, the gamma rays, all that's affecting the earth. You've got to understand the magma's moving in the molten uh, magma. The lava is all in the core of the earth, heating up from some type of intense uh, gravitational pull. That uh, Even scientists say that there's an 8% tilt. The entire universe, the entire universe we're in has tilted 8%. So, I mean, there's something biblical going on here with the signs of the second coming of Christ and all of the apocalyptic events going on on this planet are coinciding with the apocalyptic event. It's like whatever's going on in the spiritual world is manifesting in the physical. And there's signs in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And the earth is going to soon have a solar eclipse of a biblical proportion where the sky will turn as dark as sackcloth of hair, as it says in the book of Joel. That's coming up August the 21st. 33 days later, we're going to have the great constellational alignment in the heavens. It has never happened before, nor will ever happen again, but it's, it's explained to you in detail from a prophecy that's 2,000 years old by the prophet John, uh, the apostle John. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12. It's all coming together. We're, we're in the last days. You don't want to miss this program tonight. You really don't. We're going to break down all of these events that are going on around the world and try to help you understand just how close we are. Christ is knocking at the door, if you look at it in a, a prophetic time, time frame. He's literally knocking on the door. Armageddon around the corner. Are you saved? I'll see you tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern at my website at www.paulbigleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbigleyprophecy.com. If you're not saved, you better have a front row seat and get ready. If you are saved, you better pull up close. Time's running out. Are you serious? Are you serious? Last night, fireballs! What? They were racing through the sky last night. I mean, there was 51. 51 fireballs last night that uh, crashed through the, uh, our atmosphere. This was an unbelievable night of incredible 
I mean, look, we already know about the asteroid, right? Asteroid 2012 TC4, that's coming October 12th. Okay. But, uh, you know, look, 51 fireballs? I mean, usually it's like six or eight or something like that. But um, we had 51 last night. Meanwhile, we had earthquakes going off everywhere, especially that 7.7 that hit Russia and that 6.4, they finally downsized it for Peru. But uh, 51 fireballs in the sky last night. If you looked at the um, um, thumbnail, I have an actual uh, computer model of where all 51 of these fireballs came racing in to the, um, into the atmosphere to go around the Earth. So just an incredible amount of activity last night. And also, by the way, we have an asteroid that's going to go past the Earth Today, another near-Earth miss. It's an asteroid. The asteroid is 2017 NX5. That's 2017 NX5. It's going to go whizzing by the Earth today. It's not going to hit us. Yes, it is a near-Earth object, but it's 10 LD away, so don't worry. About two and a half million miles away. It won't hit us, but close enough to be considered a near-Earth object. Good news not going to hit us. But the earth is filled. We're being inundated, guys. There are so many asteroids. Fireballs are breaking through our uh, atmosphere. I mean, there's no question. We have to keep watching what's going on. We're in the days that the Bible said that the stars will fall from heaven like a fig tree casting its untimely figs. I mean, we're living in the days where the Bible told us men's hearts would start failing them for fear for looking after those things that are coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Okay? So the earth is shaken, the heavens are shaken, the wars, the rumors of wars, the false Christ and the false prophets are rising also in this last days, and people are irritated. People are uh, uh, very on edge. And the accusatory spirit, even within not only the politicians and the news media and world leaders always blaming each other, but even in the church, you see people now that all they do is go around accusing other Christians. They're more focused on bringing forth accusation. They're the accusers of the brethren, the Bible calls them, and they're operating in the spirit of darkness. And you're going to see more of that as well. And they're going to say it's okay, and they're going to justify somehow uh, and they'll use different tactics to try to tear down other brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. It's incredible to me when you have the world in, in a state of chaos, when the, the black awakening is truly going on, where evil is everywhere, where Christians are being butchered and executed and beheaded and nailed to crosses, why would we have the spirit of the accuser of the brethren? roaming around on the planet like a roaring lion seeking whom it may devour. I'm glad that we're covered by the blood of the lamb. I'm glad we're washed in the blood. And I'm glad that there are a solid remnant body of Christ believers who are standing in the gap. I notice for me, every time we get people getting saved and God blessing people being healed and uh, God really moving mightily as he comes in waves, uh, that uh, it just uh, absolutely, once again, shows the devil just how weak he is, the fact that Christ is setting the captives free. Matter of fact, Sunday night live, we had 38 salvations live on the air in the chat rooms. We had 29 yesterday at our 12 noon broadcast, and we had 27 last night at our 10 o'clock primetime live. And so, God is certainly bringing revival in the land, all right? The Bible says, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I would hear from heaven, I would forgive the sin and heal the land. And the Lord certainly is doing that, praise God. But at the same time, the world continues. The Bible says, except there come a great falling away, First, the end will not come. And the Bible says that 
Uh, because iniquity abound, the love of many would wax cold. And Proverbs says, there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. So we're living in the apostate time where they would call evil good and good evil. And the accuser of the brethren would go on this assaulting attack of judging, not realizing trying to poke the small moat that might be in your eye, so small I can't even see it, and they can't see the beam in their own. Well, I can see the fire fireballs in the sky, 51 last night. We'll keep watching it. Are you serious? I mean, I got so much joy right now. I don't know how to, I don't know how to contain it. I just love everybody, and I love the salvation station, and I love the power of God. Now, there's some people right now that I'm praying for. We're sending blankets out yesterday. We've got more to send out today and more Bibles and anointed prayer cloths. There are some people that are in stage four cancer. I have some folks that have uh, been diagnosed terminally ill. I've got some folks that are waiting on heart transplants and liver transplants, people in comas. So we've got a lot of folks we're really interceding for and praying for. Last night we were praying again this morning and we love all of you out there. We know, we know that Christ is with you. And we're praying, all right, in Jesus' name. Are you serious? Are you serious? Well, it's getting real serious. And last night, if that didn't wake you up, the earthquakes hitting around the world, especially in Russia and in Peru and Alaska. And it just keeps going. Well, grab a Bible because we have a truth for you proving to you that what is happening right now was prophesied to happen 3,000 years ago. Get some coffee. It's going to be a powerful, powerful uh, video. Here we go. Isaiah 24 says these words. Listen to this. We're going to have a pole shift. We're going to have sounds in the heavens. The apocalypse, sounds of the apocalypse. We're going to hear booms and cracks and sinkholes and opening up of the earth. And, the, and even the earth itself is going to reel and rock like a drunken man. And last night when we had these earthquakes hitting in Russia, Alaska, Peru, it was as if the earth was reeling and rocking. Well, here's what the Bible said would happen. Isaiah 24, behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down. That's a pole shift. And scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest. As with the servant, so with the master. As with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. In other words, nobody is going to escape the coming apocalypse. The land shall be utterly emptied. And utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, and broken the everlasting covenant. Now hold it a minute. I'm not talking about the redeemed here. This is the world, the world, the world. It's not just the earth and the inhabitants of the earth, but it's those that are left behind to face the wrath of God. You can read this throughout the entire Bible. The body of Christ will be gone when the Lord pours out his wrath upon the earth. And Isaiah is prophesying the coming wrath of God. Now look at this. Therefore have the curse devoured the earth and they that dwell therein are desolate notice who who the who are they that dwell there well he just told you because they've transgressed the laws they've changed the ordinances and they've broken the everlasting covenant therefore has the curse devoured the earth and they that dwell therein are desolate nobody's going to escape rich or poor doesn't matter your position and authority in life no matter what nation you're from or kingdom i don't care if you're uh living in the underground city or trying to get on a spaceship to Mars, you're not going to get out of this. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned. Few men are left. 
The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry hearted do sigh. The mirth of tabrets cease, the noise of them that rejoice and endeth, the joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink wine with a song, strong drink, strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down, every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. And in the city is left desolation. And the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree and as the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. Nothing left. They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. Now, who's doing this? For they shall cry aloud from the sea. Wherefore, glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. From the uttermost part of the earth, we have heard songs. That's the sound of the apocalypse. Even glory to the righteous. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitants of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. Are you serious? The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited then the moon shall be confounded, the sun ashamed. And when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. Let me just tell you what we just experienced here. God's judgment and the beginning of a millennial reign. God is going to, look, the moon's going to become as black blood. The sun's going to become ashamed or darkened. We are getting ready to enter into three signs in the heavens. First, a solar eclipse, the great American solar eclipse, August 21st. We've never seen anything like this across this country. It's going to go from Oregon, the coast of Oregon, all the way to the coast of South Carolina. It's a 70 mile wide path a total eclipse of the sun and it's going to happen and last for two and a half minutes a, a prophetic sign of God upon this nation I have no doubt in my mind meanwhile 33 days later we're going to have the great constellation on September 23rd that's going to show you the very constellational alignment that was shown to John the Revelator 2,000 years ago and is recorded in Revelation chapter 12. It's the revealing of the woman, which is, of course, Israel, the birthing and, and the, uh, the body of Christ and the confrontation. The, the other wonder in heaven, of course, is the beast, the red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. So it shows you that the, the time is coming for the great battle of Armageddon, the great revealing of the beast soon to come. So we're getting a revelation sign of these end times. And then 
On October the 12th, we have an asteroid. The asteroid's name is Asteroid 2012 TC4. This asteroid is going to go so close to the Earth, it's, it's the size of a football field or larger, and it's going to come so close. It's not going to be what NASA originally anticipated. The first time it went by, it was 59,000 miles from the surface of the Earth, but it's coming by again October 12th, and it will come by somewhere less than 4,000 miles from the surface of the Earth with a gravitational pull trying to pull it in. Now, this is unbelievable. Even NASA's charts show it coming in somewhere. Uh, the, the diagram shows it coming in somewhere around 30, 35,000 miles from the Earth, but their numbers show it coming in less than 4,000. And they're not putting that on the diagram. They don't want to freak the people out. But this thing is coming in extremely close to the Earth. And when we get about five days or seven days before it gets here, they're going to have a real clear ideal just where it is. So give your life to Jesus Christ, folks, because we are running out of time.